Anastasia first. I got to say, you have probably one of the best smiles I have seen in a long time. I got to assume the summer has really been good for you so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've been roasting. It's like, I don't know. It's like very extremely hot. We're working outside today and I'm like, uh, my feels like my head's going to pop off. <laughs> oh man too bad you weren't in uh in toronto we're actually cool in toronto right now it's oh. it's actually really nice like sitting oh. on the porch kind of nice and mm -hmm. not having to worry about burning or anything so oh i know man these summers have been something else i i had a tornado hit my property last friday that's the first Are you serious yeah i'm completely serious a weather tower bent in half and it took out like four red pines that were hundreds of years old and it just caught a swath around my house i was in the basement with my dog yeah it was terrifying so you're okay though your dog's okay oh, yeah. no i'm fine we're fine everything was fine it's like it was a mess but i've never lived under threat of tornadoes in my life in ontario so that crazy happened. insane yeah. and I, I remember last year it was like that and i can all actually remember too when it happened in I think it was in Brampton, they had the okay. tornadoes and a friend of mine, literally her house was on one side and the house next to her, two houses down, completely wiped out by the tornado. <sighs> yep, I believe it. I'm just north of there. So I live like outside of a town called Creemore, about 45 minutes north of Brampton. So, yeah. Crazy times. But you know what always makes sure that we have good times is programming and knowing the fact that moonshine is coming back for season three <laughs> nice. i don't even think a tornado could take that <laughs> facility out how does it feel coming back to season three? Oh man i it's such a gift i this is one of the most like satisfying challenging roles i have ever played and rianne has taught me so much and I and the, and then the the company as like all the actors we've gotten so close we've weathered COVID and hurricanes and um, a crazy shoot schedule so it's been one of the like richest filming experiences I've ever had. Can we talk about your character because it's almost like she's she's always on the fringe. But the thing is though, she how do I put it? She knows what she wants but she will do the craziest things to get to where she wants to get to. Am I right about that? Yes, she will. She will. I feel like she has no filter and she's um, morality doesn't really exist for her. <laughs> it's by any means necessary. I'm not like that, but I was like, Oh, this is kind of nice. Like not that I want to become a maniacal tyrant. And no. I don't think she is either. I think it's just, no unself-aware right yeah. not aware of how obnoxious it is <laughs> where do you pick that up because it's not just the great lines but you have to voice voice her a certain way and this goes back to i was just talking about how wonderful your smile is with her though it's all in the eyes how do you do that <sighs> i don't know i mean like <laughs> It was, a, it was a process of like revelation to me too because I was like oh, who is this creature but I did sort of like I have a friend um, my best friend growing up that I've known since I don't know grade five her sister she has a younger sister that we were like you know she would always make fun of and she was just so invested about everything like she took everything so seriously and I was like Oh, she's a little bit like that. And then she was also, Rihanna is totally me when I'm going through puberty, feeling my ugliest and most awkward at the age of 11, being so like embarrassed and like, um, I don't know, righteous around my family. And I feel like that's sort of what I, you know, the side of myself that I never wanted to show anybody is exactly what Rihanna is. <laughs> so is it a scary thing that you're talking about a character who you kind of helped develop from 11 years old, but this character is an adult? I know. They're all a little bit delayed in their development, let's just say. <laughs> let's talk about then, um, before we talk about season three, let's talk about season one and season two. And to just catch people up, because season one was really the introduction. Season yeah. two was more of 
where the craziness was established because it's relationships, it's drugs, it's 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 the power struggle that was going on. Mm. And then we're going to talk about season three. So let's talk about season one and two. Uh, season one and two actually were meant to play like chronologically. The hope was that they would air back to back, which is why you don't see a huge sort of like, although we do transform, but like um, we sort of pick up, it's still the same summer. Um, season one, we were still very much like discovering the tone of the show, figuring out what it was, establishing, you know, the different alliances and a lot of Rianne's storyline is losing her husband, finding out that her husband's sleeping with her sister, and then falling in love unexpectedly with a man that she then discovers has a fake identity and is actually a cop when her family is, you know, hiding a lot of criminal activity. So uh, lots of conflict. <laughs> and then by the end of season two, she's pregnant with twins or the begin end of season one she's pregnant then we discover it's twins and this is like a person who is not emotionally um able to nurture a shoe so like it's <laughs> an internal journey of Rianne trying to figure out how to be nurturing and kind and and soften some of her sharp edges so that she can be the mother that um you know and this is another part like i think Rianne you know, Rianne, obviously there, Ken Finley Cullen is her and Ryan's biological father, but the story we never tell on television, but that we talk about is the fact that they were abandoned when they were kids. And that whole second season, I was sort of like, oh, Rianne's scared that she'll be as bad of a mother that, as her mother who abandoned her and them was. So that was sort of the internal journey. And then by season three, I have everything I wanted. So who's Rianne when she has a man that she loves, when she has the kids she thought she could never have, when she has the moonshine, control of the moonshine she's proven herself, who is she when she's actually happy or she thinks she should be happy? Um, yeah. Okay, but you said you had um, your character has control of the moonshine. This is where season three comes in because we could lose moonshine completely because there's another dark element coming in. And it's something that I think we're all dealing with in some way, shape or form, because it's like, I could have this wonderful home and then some idiot wants to build a condo next to me on this side or this side. Yeah. Let's talk about that and what we're dealing with. Well, Moonshine has a developer coming in pretending to build a resort next door, but really they're going to bulldoze it. And but I think the theme, the deeper theme and something we always talked about is that like Moonshine has this very nostalgic feeling and like I don't know how your summers were when you were a kid, but ours was like walk to the pool, maybe get some Pringles, watch 14 hours of television like you know oh here's a can we can kick down the road that should keep you busy for two hours i mean it's simple simple times and all of that's changing and that comes in the form of development and fancy fancy resorts with all the amenities but maybe we just want to stay in a tent or in a crappy cabin and like you know boil our water for tea maybe that's kind of nice so that's, I think, a deeper theme that we're exploring. Um, and I have a lot of nostalgia for for that kind of simple childhood, too. Oh, let me tell you something. I It's mm -hmm. funny. There's a video out right now of, of, of a, a young gentleman who makes a comment about uh, older folks drinking from the hose. And he says, and he says, wasn't there a sink to drink from? And a woman around my age comes back and she just laces into him and basically <laughs> tries to explain what our childhood was like. You didn't go um, inside to go get a drink. You grab somebody's hose and you drank from that. And like <laughs> you said, kicking the can down the street, you were gone outside until the lights were going on, on street lights. And that's when you knew you had to go home, right yeah. down to the point where you had a uh, on television at 10 o'clock, it would say, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Kind of thing, you know? Oh, hilarious. You know, those know were yeah. those were the good times. And I love what Moonshine represents on that. But Moonshine is also from the way you described with season three, even though there were all these crazy conflicts going on, 
it sounds like family is coming together in in a in a way that we've never seen mm -hmm. the family do. Yeah, Lydia and Rianne are working together until Rianne discovers something that um, undermines that genuine new friendship. No spoilers. Okay. Um, uh, and I think that's at the heart of the, the show always. It's just that we all now sincerely love each other and have gotten to know each other's kids and spent four summers together and been to each other's weddings. And so uh, that the relationship in the family um, is really what the show is truly all about. You know, um, I, I was talking to Emma earlier about all of this. And one of the things I said what I love about Moonshine, Moonshine to me is the uh, is Dallas and Tim Hortons put together. This is what you know. This <laughs> okay. is what the show represents. Oh, I love that. I mean, I I watched Dallas with my parents. They, my parents love Dallas. I don't remember a ton of it, but that's so great. It is. It's that like soapy family saga. It dressed up in a blue collar Timmy's cup. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If there is anything you want to say to any fans out there who may not have had a chance to see season one and season two, and they're walking into season three, oh. what do you want to say to them? Um, go stream season one and season two. <laughs> <laughs> <You numbers? laughs> there's more, but wait, there's more. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I have... I, I just want to say, like, I don't think you'll find a more fun, uh, vibey show with a great summer soundtrack that will complement the the hot summer we're having. Well, you reminded me about that. Thank you so much. What's going on with the soundtrack? Because I saw the list of music that's going on, and this is insane. Thank it's you awesome. for reminding me about that. Yeah, well, I mean, that's it was, it's supposed to be like, you know, like, the cottage jams that you listen to all summer and um so much Joni Mitchell and we got Neil Young and it's um it's awesome the music makes the show but it's also the soundtrack of of the of of Hubbard's I will say and also of of every summer you might have spent at the cottage with a family I love yeah. this. I cannot wait. This is going to be so cool. I only got one last question. I, I should actually throw this over the producers, whatever. Are they ever going to sell a t-shirt with the moonshine logo oh, on it? Because I love that. It's so great. I know they should. Um, I'll tell them to, I'll tell them okay. to. Yeah, <laughs> please do. And also tell them too that please, we need a season four, even though we're excited about season three. So can you tell them that also too, please? Oh, they know, but I'll tell them again. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Congratulations on season three. Cannot wait. This is going to be so much fun. Thank you for reminding me about the music. I cannot wait for that too. Because like I said, when I saw the list, I was like, okay, we're heading somewhere where I know I want to be at and stay at. Thanks again. Congratulations. Cannot wait and definitely talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Loved meeting you. Thank you.